Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Today we continue in our study of the Gospel according to Mark. We're in chapter 14, verses 17 through 21, which reads, When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. That's Mark chapter 14, verses 17 through 21. Today we return to our study of Mark chapter 14. The setting was Thursday night in the upper room where the Lord Jesus is celebrating the last Passover with his disciples. It was Thursday night, the day before he was to be crucified. In that day, when they ate a meal with others, they reclined on one elbow and laid on their side at a table that had three sides. They laid diagonal from the center of the table with their feet toward the side and the back. For 1,500 years since the Exodus, the Passover had been celebrated at that time of the year by the Jews. Without a break, they celebrated. This would be the last Passover because the Lord Jesus would fulfill all the righteous requirements of the law through his death, burial, and resurrection. This final Passover marked the end of the Old Covenant and the beginning of the New. In verses 17 and 18 of today's passage, we read, When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Somewhere in the middle of the Passover meal, the Lord Jesus announced that one of them would betray him. As indicated in Psalm 55, the Lord Jesus was about to be betrayed by one of his own disciples who was at the table in that upper room. In verse 19 of today's passage, we read, They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely, you don't mean me. Saddened at the idea, each disciple asked the Lord the obvious question. The word translated saddened means to be distressed, sorrowful, profoundly pained. One by one, each of them agonized. They agonized because they knew their hearts. They knew they were capable of doing such a thing. Knowing that his betrayer was Judas, the Lord Jesus allowed each of the disciples to wrestle with the possibility because it could have been any one of them. It is in all of our hearts to betray the Lord. And he was probing their hearts for their benefit. In so doing, the Lord Jesus made them aware of their total depravity apart from his involvement in their lives. This reminds me of a song that was popularized by DC Talk, written by Charlie Peacock. The song is in the light. DC talks saying, This disease of self runs through my blood. It's a cancer fatal to my soul. Every attempt on my behalf has failed to bring this sickness under control. We all are fully aware that we are potential Judases. In verses 20 and 21 of today's passage, we read, It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. I find it very instructive when I consider the responses of the twelve disciples. A study of Matthew 26 enables us to see this. 
Every one of the disciples responded with, Is it I? The eleven responded with, Is it I, Lord? Whereas Judas responded with, Is it I, Rabbi? It is never recorded in the Gospels that Judas ever one time referred to the Lord Jesus as Lord. For the eleven, they existed for the Lord. But for Judas... The Lord existed for him. And perhaps that's the difference. Judas, like anyone who rejects God's free gift of salvation, made his choice that night. It appears that he acted on greed, but he received so little, 30 pieces of silver, about $200 in today's currency. Everything Judas did that night fit into God's plan. And Judas played a crucial role in the death of the Lord Jesus. But God is not to be blamed. No, Judas made the choice himself. God didn't make him make that choice. He knew he would make the choice because he's omniscient. But he did not make him make that choice. The word translated woe in verse 21 means cursed or damned to hell. Sadly, Judas hanged himself. The rope broke and his bowels were exploded on the rocks below. And he was thrown into a dump, a trash heap outside of Jerusalem. And worse, he ended up in the eternal lake of fire. There's no stronger statement in Scripture on human responsibility than this statement that the Lord Jesus made concerning Judas. He said it would be better for him if he had not been born. That is the strongest statement in Scripture on human responsibility. Better never born than damned forever. The most severe punishment of hell is for those who knew the most about Christ and yet rejected him. But it does not have to be that way. In John chapter 3, verses 16 through 21, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light is come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to me, to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.